June 21st, 2022 of the City Council of the City San Clemente. And it is now five, is now 515 and let the record show Council Member Noblock, Ferguson, James are here in person. Uh, Council Member Ward is here via Zoom. Mayor Tr Pro Tem Duncan is here via Zoom. Ms. Ferguson, you have a point of order you want to make? Yes, thank you, Mayor James. I have a point of order to make tonight. I see that there's teleconference with Mayor Pro Tem Duncan participating, noticed on the agenda properly within 72 hours in advance of tonight's meeting. But um, Kathleen, uh, why are you not participating here and you're not listed? Can the city clerk's office uh, maybe respond Council to that? Member, make, make your comment and then we will inquire. Yeah, I'd like, actually, I'd like to um, propose this to the uh, city clerk as to why thank another you. member, please let me finish. I thank you. Another member is participating remotely without it being documented 72 hours in advance in compliance with the Brown Act. I did not prepare, I did not prepare the agenda anymore. Um, I'll have to defer to the city attorney. Yeah, Mayor and Council, thanks for that opportunity. Um, the Brown Act has specific provisions to teleconference into a council meeting from a remote location. Uh, if that location is noticed in the agenda posted and uh, members of the public have access to that remote location. So council member Duncan's access, as you noted, council member, has been noticed pursuant to that state law. Um, in addition to the state law, um, my opinion and the practice you've used is that the Americans with Disabilities Act allows council members to participate remotely. If that's required as an accommodation to a disability that they have. That disability would prevent them attending in person and would preclude access to the public at their place of residence or hospital or wherever they happen to be. So uh, you members of the council have been afforded that opportunity. That has to be documented uh, to the city clerk uh, and their office so that they can evaluate that uh, disability and evaluate the accommodation that's requested. Follow up, how is that documented, city attorney? Uh, there's, a, there's a form given to council members who, who desire to complete it and submit it. We don't talk about the conditions that lead to that accommodation publicly because they can often, uh, well, they, they have to involve health considerations. I'm just looking for process. So you, um, so a form was submitted. At what time was that submitted? Uh, the clerk's office have to help us on that. City clerk's office, could you assist me please? Okay, thank you, duly noted. Thank you, Mayor James. So, I was very concerned this evening about the fact that we only have three people, three council members in, in the chambers this evening. We have important issues to discuss this evening, uh, ranging from whether we will renew the contract of the, uh, CCNR, uh, a public hearing uh, in regards to the implementation of community choice energy. Um, I think we have a lot of important stuff this evening and I'm very concerned about how we're going to manage two members that are zooming in and three members that are in chambers. I initially thought that I, there's nothing. City manager, is there anything on this agenda that um, cannot be punted until the 19th of July? No, sir. Everything can be punted to the, uh, the 19th of July. 
with that being said, I'm very prone to take this meeting and adjourn it until the 19th of July. But I'm, I'm looking at at least 10 members of the audience that came here probably to be heard, uh, to see your counsel in action. And, and consequently, I, I'm simply not going to make that motion. Um, but I do, I do have a lot of concerns about how we're going to, to function tonight. If we recall during COVID, council meetings were not very productive and, via Zoom. And I'm a real believer in being here in person. But with that being said, unless anyone else has any concerns or comments, uh, I, I will proceed to the Pledge of Allegiance. Mayor, I have a, I have a comment. Yes. So I do understand that there's several people in the audience. I have no issue of adjourning the meeting to the 19th. I, I share your concern of us that we are not there. Um, I, I think it would be a better, uh, better conversation about the items that you just said. So I, I wouldn't, I would make that motion to do that if you would like. Um, I would ask the city attorney if there's any way, uh, if we adjourn the meeting to the 19th, um, can we, do we have the ability to take public comments tonight and adjourn the rest of the items so that we can hear what the public has to say? Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, you have the ability to, to take that option. So Mayor, I would make the motion that we, we do adjourn it, but before we do that, and, and uh, I don't know if there's a second, uh, we can read the adjournment after that, but we hear public comment first. I'll second that. So motion by Ward, second by Duncan, to adjourn the meeting until the 19th of July. So all items here this evening would go to the 19th of July. However, any public comments we, we would hear this evening. Is that is that your motion, Ms. Ward? Yes, it is. Thank you. Does that include the closed uh, the closed session as well? Um, you I'm probably needs to include it because it's a separate meeting. So, so we'll include the closed session. You you good with that? Okay, thank you. Uh, motion motion by Ward, second by Duncan. Ms. Ferguson. I just have one comment. Um, several meetings ago, I uh, requested and had two members support having um, the proposal for an amphitheater in town on the agenda. So I just want to ensure that's going to be on the July 19, 2022 agenda that's fair before enough. I vote. Thank you. Thank you. So your vote is aye? Aye. Yes. As long as that's included. <laughs> aye. Uh, Ms. Ward? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem? Aye. And I'm an aye. That passes 5-0. Uh, so we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll go to uh, public comments. Thank you. Mr. Loeffler, lead us in Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pleasure, sir. And over our heart? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and justice for all. Uh, yes, just one point of uh, just one point of clarification. Are you talking about just the uh, public speakers for oral communications, just or we're all, going, we're going, or all cards? We're only going to do public speakers for oral communications, and then we will adjourn. Okay. I have uh, three cards. The first is Amanda Q, followed by Ruth, followed by Rick Leffler. Um, I have a presentation. Um, that could be put up, please. Uh, next slide, please. 
So at the last city council meeting, I did a presentation regarding the artwork of Mr. Roy Gonzalez, uh, someone that I've known for the last 44 years. And um, I was at fault. I submitted the wrong um, presentation. I chose the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo because it was commissioned by Pope Julius II. And you know he was a cornerstone work of high Renaissance art. Uh, next slide, please. And the creation of Adam, a seminal piece of the Sistine Chapel. Um, this piece by Michelangelo has been invoked in a myriad of ways in film, in memes, in other artwork, in art puzzles. And um, next slide, please. And then his also work in the Piata, Michelangelo also, um, his artwork has been depicted by other um, in a Vietnam Veterans and Women's Memorial by Glenda, uh, Glenda Goodacre. It's been in TV and Nickelodeon and Avatar, The Death of Superman, uh, DC Comics, The Wounded uh, Cavalier by William Shakespeare Burton in 1855. Next slide, please. And as far as the Triton is concerned, it can be seen in various fountains throughout Europe, in London, in Spain, and in Rome. And it's also seen in our San Clemente Tridents. Next slide, please. And the arc were used as criticism. And um, the mas papal master of ceremonies, Biagio de Cesar de Chesna, stated that the depiction of the judgment was inappropriate, stating it was mostly disgraceful that in so sacred a place there should be, have been depicted all those nude figures exposing themselves so shamefully. And then when, um, Chesna complained to the Pope, the Pope stated that his authority did not extend to hell. So basically, um, he should not have, uh, Biagio de Chesna should have, should have not complained. And the reason why I bring this up, next slide please, is that religious imagery and artwork has been throughout, it's been depicted in art. And the invocation of religious imagery and themes into artwork doesn't mean that the artwork is attacking or making fun of religion. The purpose depends on the artist's intent and meaning. And another reason why I bring this up is that the Ocean Festival has had a partnership with the city of San Clemente for many years. They're celebra celebrating their 45th year. Um, the director is Jeff Beasley, and also I think assistant is Peggy Vance. Previously, from what I remember, it was Arnie. Ernie Marquez and of course also Peggy Vance. The previous years were I think Jim Nielsen was on the board and I know they're the lazy liaison has always been the Peaches Parks and Recreation so I don't know why they, they created a new liaison for that. Thank you, thank you very much. Ruth followed by Rick Leffler. Presentation please. Thank you, Kate. March 1st, staff submits a gender report titled Site-Specific Master Plan Update. Staff recommends the City Council table the item and direct the City Clerk to re-advertise the public hearing at a later date. No explanation is given. The City website does not provide an explanation. Slide two, please. The City Council directs staff they can defer this item for approximately two months. That would be May 1st. Mayor advised staff that residents have concerns with the recommendations in the city's revised plan. Mr. Sun's request to have no time that was denied. And yet we here we are June 21st and it still is not on the agenda. It appears that Mr. Sun has once again overridden and ignored council directives. Is this another example of the city manager's dereliction of his duties as well as a violation of city and San Clemente municipal code? This is not the first time I've submitted documentation that our city manager chooses to ignore your directives, and yet he is still running the city, and really it does look like he's still running you. Why do you continue to allow this? 
you have been given verification that this city has staff that falsifies documents, instructs individuals to falsify documents, uses residents' personal information on documents without their knowledge or consent, and fail to collect monies that are owed the city. Does council have the responsibility and authority to rid our city of these employees? And if so, why haven't you? Slide three. Mr. Sun's email and phone call alleges that at your directive, everything except pickleball to Steed is on hold. Obviously that is not true as he was specifically directed to bring the revised park master plan back by May 1st. And as you can see, Ms. Wiley is recommending the city spend $35,000 for a master plan amendment to Vista Hermosa. Another example of dishonesty by Mr. Sund as there is no way his staff is doing this without his knowledge and consent. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Slide four. This photo was taken at Sanji Playground and posted on Facebook. Could you correct the slide, please? That, thank goodness a resident took their personal metal detector to Sanji and found more nails and assorted pieces of metal in the playground. And then there's comments like, it's Sanji Park. Of course there's nails in the playground. Over 10 months ago, three council members, two park commissioners, Ms. Wiley met me at Sanji. I pointed out many hazardous conditions, including sidewalk crack, nails and splinters coming out of the scoreboard box, and the many hazards in the playground equipment plus the disgusting conditions of pickle, uh, picnic tables, drinking fountains, et cetera. Please come back and you'll see these conditions have not been addressed. Please require the city maintain all parks and all residents quality of life equally. Please remove any staff whose actions violate this city's employment ethics. Thank you. Thank you. How many more do we have? Right. It's public comment. It's public comment. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Hello, council and the council are here and here, there and everywhere. I, I just wanted to bring up uh, one thing uh, regarding, just to throw it out. The uh, committee selections last week, and I think you put really good people on at the end of the day, no problem whatsoever. But I noticed during the night, there seemed to be, and this goes to all of you, including the ones that, that aren't, aren't here, there seemed to be some, I don't know, either personal or political input, I think, in some of the selections. Some, some of them more glaring than others, but definitely some. And I, I'd like to remind everybody, and this is for selections or the council in general, is it's, it's what's best for the city and nothing personal should, should step into it, I, I think. I know that can't work. It doesn't really work, but maybe we should strive for that. I'll, like one example is let's say, let's say one of the council members brings up a, an, an issue. Let's say it's like the desalinization plan. Now, let's say that council member, I, I maybe I support another candidate for a race someplace that they don't support. That shouldn't be a reason to hold that against that council person for a for a good a good project. Or maybe I just don't like that council person personally. That still shouldn't be a reason not to support good ideas on the council. And so I'd really like to throw out to you as maybe there's always partisanship, maybe we can do a little less. And, and just one other example, I remember months ago, one council member brought up the, again, the concern over the unfunded liability, which we know all of us should be concerned with and discussed it a little bit. And then it, I don't know where it went exactly, but it kind of went away. And then recently, another council member brought up a, a suggestion about possibly paying down the unfunded liability. And I, I think that suggestion was something to do with maybe earmarking a small percentage of whatever surplus we have at the end of the year to go towards paying it down. And I know the talk at that time was, well, it's kind of like a drop in the bucket. And that might be true. And I don't know where that idea has gone, but I, I think it's a real good idea that maybe at least you guys could explore together. Because if we could come up with something where we even paid down $1,000 a year towards that unfunded liability. That will put us ahead of every city in Orange County, probably LA County, probably the entire state because nobody's addressing it. So this would be a great opportunity for maybe a nonpartisan way to get together and at least you know show on optics that we're concerned about that. And again, just keeping it in the, in the big, big picture, you know, whatever's best for the city. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Loeffler.
Good evening, Mayor, uh, Good evening. members of the council. Uh, Mark McGuire, apologize for the casual outfit. I don't normally come to speak to the council in shorts and they are rainbow sandals. So. This is <laughs> San Clemente. Yeah, yeah this is, is San Clemente. Clemente. So world's best climate proof right here. I just got back in town after a two week vacation. Um, I, I just came in as I was hearing that everything's gonna get pushed to the 17th and I, I'm, I'll speak generally to that, although Truth be known, I have a particular interest in a consent calendar item. It's a ministerial approval of a final map. Uh, it's with the Pacific Coast Church parcel on Frontera. And in order to close the sale of that transaction, they have to create that parcel. And so pushing that off to the 17th is going to delay that closing. Um, hopefully not. You know, um, but it's you say it's ministerial? Yeah. Uh, approval of a final map is always a ministerial act it has to be done by a council but it's it, if it meets the criteria of approval for the final map then it's there's really no discretion on the part of the council so i don't know if there's any way for the council to act on a subset of consent calendar items or one consent calendar item i don't know what the circumstances are for the delay because i came in late i apologize but any consideration you could give on that would be appreciated thank you very thank much. you Mr. McGuire, call me tomorrow, please. Um, first, um, I, the subject I want to talk about is the limitations on campaign uh, funding. Uh, but before I say that, I want to push back a little bit. Um, City Council, if you're calling a meeting, uh, the public, a lot of people are expecting a meeting. A little pushback here. Looking through, there's a lot of items and there's a lot of people, everyone renting a parking lot to uh, getting paid for storm drains uh, who are not, who are everything's on hold. Uh, it's not that cool. So a little pushback here. Anyway, campaign claim funding. Uh, on the surface, that sounds like a great idea. Let's push it back to 100 bucks, 500 bucks each, something. Campaign funding uh, reform, we could call it. Other cities are doing it. Uh, they get an A rating from left-wing rating groups. Well, we get a, what, a D, D minus, whatever, because uh, we have a larger limit, uh, if any, in some instances. I want to share what I've thought about uh, that subject today when I was driving around, take my kid to, to the doctor. Superficially, that sounds like a good idea. It's a very American idea. It seems to spread out the equality. It seems to push back the opportunity for wealthy developers or business owners or what special interest groups from buying an election, right? What it kind of sounds like. But that's not really the case. My name's Mike. You don't know my last name. If I wanted to run for city council, I, I have no name recognition in this town at all. Incumbents, some of whom aren't even here today, one of whom is running, have a lot of name recognition. They can get a lot of $100, $500 contributions. For years, they've been part of this city. They've been shaking hands. They've been going to meetings. And uh, they've got the constituents. They are the establishment. New folks, new blood, new interests, new ideas coming in don't really have that. We don't have the recognition. We kind of have to bootstrap. Folks have to pitch in a bunch of money to make it happen. And uh, the limitations in from my perspective, are kind of counterintuitive. They're, they're kind of against democracy. They, they limit the ability for new ideas, new people to, uh, to get involved. Maybe a restriction of 5,000 or 10,000, a big number. Maybe, maybe that makes a little bit of sense if you're really concerned about rich people buying an election, if that's the motivation. But limiting it to $500, $100 contributions, all that's benefiting is folks who are part of the system, been in it for a long while. Nothing wrong with that necessarily, but it is a hurdle to entry. And I wish you guys would think about it. I won't be here at this next meeting. I'm going on vacation with the kids, so took the time to bring it up and share my thoughts. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? So with that, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn to the regular meeting to be held on July the 19th, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. for the purpose of conducting interviews and appointments for the Human Affairs Committee. 
Part one of the business meeting will commence at 5 p.m. and closed session will begin at 6 p.m. Part two of the business meeting will commence at 7 p.m. The meeting will take place in the Community Center Auditorium located 100 North Cali Seville, San Clemente. Note, the regular meeting of July 5th, 2022 was previously canceled. May I have a second, please? Second. Motion by James, second by Ward. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Noblock? Uh, Ms. Ward? Aye. M. Duncan. And I'm an I, that's that's 